Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we are going to talk about the basics of creating proofs for geometry and geometric figures. All right, so let's talk about some of the basics of proofs. And what I'm going to do first before getting into a geometric proof is just to give you a proof as a logical argument that has a, a two column proof as a logical argument that has a particular flow to it. And today we're just going to talk about two column proofs. All right, so let's get started. In a two column proof, typically you'll be given some information that will help you create an argument and to draw a conclusion from your argument. We call the provided information as givens, and we're going to call that which you are trying to conclude as the prove statement. So you're given some information, and then you want to reach a conclusion, which we call what you're trying to prove or the prove statement. A two column proof uses what's called a deductive structure. So it builds on information that's provided using a logical argument. You're going to state what's given and then use definitions of terms, facts, which we call theorems and assumption of facts, postulates to reach a final conclusion. All right. So what I want to do first is I want to use perhaps a fun and somewhat true um, idea or uh, thought that I want to prove, uh, but it's not going to be geometrically related. I'm just going to use a two-column proof format for it. So we're going to talk about McDonald's and In-N-Out Burgers. I live on the uh, West Coast, and In-N-Out Burgers is a very popular chain, uh, fast food chain that produces what I would call relatively high-quality burgers compared to other fast food chains. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the relationship of McDonald's burgers to In-N-Out burgers and their food. And I want to prove that In-N-Out is a better and healthier place to eat than McDonald's. So I start with some given information. And I'm not picking on McDonald's here. I, I just wanted to prove a point. Um, and that's a, a two-column proof point. We're talking about how to create two-column proofs. So it's given that McDonald's uses filler or non-beef ingredients in some of their hamburgers. They also freeze their french fries. They're not freshly made. McDonald's promotes supersized portions, which are much greater than required meal portions. So they promote portions which are above and beyond what a typical individual would eat in a given meal. And then on the other hand, In-N-Out burgers, and again, these are given. So these are facts which are provided as part of the basis of what I'm trying to prove. Uh, In-N-Out burgers are 100% beef. Their french fries are made from scratch on the premises, so they cut their potatoes and then they fry them. In-N-Out does not offer drinks, fries, or burgers which are larger than individual meal portions. All right, so what I want to do is take that given information and prove that In-N-Out is a better place to eat than McDonald's. So let's talk about the two-column proof format and the process of writing a two-column proof. So the first thing that I'm going to do in the two-column proof is I'm going to match or map or sketch the logical flow of a proof first before determining the sequence of the statements and reasons. And I tell my class, do not meander. So the word meander means to get somewhere indirectly. Now we can get there indirectly, but it'll take more time. And it will also potentially expose us to saying things which might not possibly be true. And it might also distract the person who's reading the proof or trying to identify uh, or relate to what we're talking about. So I say, don't meander in a proof. Go directly to what's needed. Uh, your givens, your theorems, definitions, and postulates that are required, and then your proof statement. Uh, and you want to do that by creating an organizational map or sketch about what you're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. I create an outline. So I know given McDonald's burgers have additives, In-N-Out burgers do not, and I have abbreviated M for McDonald's and IO for In-N-Out. And I say, as a result of that, McDonald's burgers are less healthy than In-N-Out. I'm going to say it's given that McDonald's fries are frozen, which was part of the givens. Uh, In-N-Out fries are made fresh from uh, cut potatoes. So McDonald's fries are less fresh and potentially less healthy and less tasty than In-N-Out fries. Then lastly, I'm going to say it's given that uh, McDonald's promotes portion sizes which are greater than a typical meal size. Uh, McDonald's promotes portions which encourage overeating and In-N-Out does not. So my conclusion is In-N-Out is a better place to eat than McDonald's. So I want to uh, follow this logical flow as I create my two column proof. Now, for this proof, um, it's a very short proof, but when you get into proofs that are 
five or 10 or 15 or 20 lines, you really can get lost in what you're trying to say. So it's very helpful to write a basic outline first before you move forward with your proof. All right, so uh, I created my outline or I mapped the sketch logical flow. And then I wanna create the format or the outline for the proof. And believe it or not, a two column proof has two columns. First column is going to contain the heading statements. And the second column is gonna contain the heading reasons. So I draw my two column proof. I have statements and reasons. Statements on the left side and reasons on the right. All right, so, uh, the third and fourth thing that I wanna do is I want to uh, identify the statements and reasons and I wanna number them and make them correspond to the statements and make them correspond to the reason which has the same number. And then each numbered statement or reason must originate on the same line. So what do I mean by that? Okay, well I take my map or sketch and outline and I'm gonna start filling in my statements and reasons. I'm gonna identify them, number them, so that the corresponding statement refers to the corresponding reason and each corresponding statement of reason starts or begins on its own line. So uh, the first is McDonald's burgers have non-beef ingredients in the meat. That's given, and you can see that one and one, I have one McDonald's burgers have non-beef ingredients in the meat, one given, two In-N-Out IO burgers are 100% beef, two, that's given, three In-N-Out burgers are healthier than McDonald's, In-N-Out beef is healthier, healthier than the natural and chemical additives used in McDonald's burgers. And you can see that each of the individual statements and reasons starts on its own line and the corresponding numbers for each of the statements have a corresponding reason uh, in the right-hand column. All right, uh, fifthly, I'm gonna include a diagram of the figure I discussed in the proof. The diagram must be properly labeled, so I'm gonna have some fun with this. Uh, and of course, geometry is very entertaining most of the time. Some of you might not think that, but uh, we like to have fun in our geometry class. So what I've done here is I've created my two diagrams or drawings. I have my McDonald's bur uh, burger on the left and my In-N-Out burger on the right. And I've identified the burger as having filler from McDonald's and the uh, burger from In-N-Out as having 100% beef. So again, having fun, just I have a diagram and I've labeled it appropriately. And then lastly, uh, when you write your reasons uh, or theorems, definitions, and postulates in the reasons section, you want to you can abbreviate them if that's okay with your teacher. Uh, but you want to make sure you do not absolutely do not reword them, right? So they're not your theorems, definitions, and postulates. They're stated theorems, definitions, and postulates provided by the people who create the geometry books and the geometry gods. So you want to follow them word for word, although you might abbreviate them in some fashion. So let's talk about how I might abbreviate uh, the last reason. And remember the last reason was in and out beef is healthier than the natural and chemical additives used in McDonald's burgers. So again, I did have not reworded the reason. I've just identified it by abbreviating it uh, so I have a cow here with a flower, which means natural. And of course, I'm just making this up for fun. Uh, chemical uh, additives used in McDonald's burgers. Okay, so you can see that it's okay to abbreviate in some cases uh, for your theorems, definitions, and postulates, but never okay to reword them. All right, so now uh, we've had fun with this proof. Let's move on to discussing how to create a proof, a geometric proof, uh, before we get into that, I need to give you some information which you're going to use as part of the proof. So let's talk about just some basic theorems uh, and definitions which we'll use in the next couple of geometric proofs. All right, so a theorem is a mathematical statement that can be proven. And I say uh, there are lots of theorems, definitions, and postulates, so I have my class categorize each of the theorems, definitions, and postulates. We're going to start with theorem 1 and theorem 2 from our book. The number really uh, is irrelevant. Uh, because they could be different uh, numbers. These particular two theorems could be different numbers in different books. So I say theorem one is if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And I have my students always draw pictures and then write any abbreviations that are required. So I say if two angles are right angles and they are congruent, picture and then the abbreviation. Theorem number two, if two angles are straight angles, then they are congruent, uh, picture and then the abbreviation. So let's talk also about some theorems, which I call zero theorems, 
which the book uh, does not provide formally, but which uh, the book uses, our book uses, as part of proofs. Uh, first one I call 0 0.1. If two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. Uh, and the V just means that I expect my students to write that theorem out verbatim as a reason, and uh, also they draw a picture for their notes. And then theorem 0 0.2 is if two segments have the same measure, then they are congruent. So basically one and the same, almost one and the same thing. If two angles, angles have the same measure, then they're congruent. And uh, 0 0.2, if two segments have the same measure, then they are congruent. All right, uh, now let's talk about a couple definitions. I have a definition of a right angle. And I'm going to say if an angle is at a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. And the reverse of that, the converse of that is also true. If an angle's measure is 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. And I'm going to say for my class that uh, <clears throat> if they need to state either one of these, they can just say definition of a right angle. And we have a definition of a straight angle. If an angle is a straight angle, then its measure is 180 degrees. And then the converse, if an angle's measure is 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle angle. So uh, definitions are always reversible. I have a definition of a right angle, a definition of a straight angle. Uh, those two are reversible. And again, my class can use um, definition of straight angle in place of either one of those explicit statements uh, if required. Okay, so let's talk about a proof. And uh, I'm going to create it for you and then solve it for you. Uh, so again, I have my two column statements and reasons. I have each of my statements correspond to the given reason. By number, each of the statements and reasons are on there or start originate on their own line. So it's given that angle A and B are right angles. And I've identified in the drawing by the box in the left-hand corner here of the uh, angles, which tells you that you can assume that these are right angles, and it's also given. And I'm going to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. So we're going to prove this two ways. We're going to use uh, one of the theorem zeros first and then show how theorem 1 uh, has... Uh, help to reduce the uh, requirement for the number of statements and reasons by one. And uh, by the way, 2CP just means two column proof. That's my abbreviation in class. All right, so uh, statement number one, angle A and B are right angles. That's given. Uh, the measure of angle A and B is equal to 90 degrees. And I use my zero definition or definition of right angle. If an angle is a right angle, then it is equal to 90 degrees. Or I can just state definition of a right angle. And then finally, I say angle A is congruent to angle B. And this is my zero theorem. If two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. Now, the theorem that we use uh, or learned, theorem no, number one, said that if two angles are right angles and they're congruent, we can use that to uh, shorten this proof by one step. Then I just wanted to show you the difference in the two uh, different ways to prove the same uh, proof in this case. One requires one fewer step. In this case, I wouldn't say that you're necessarily meandering if you use uh, the prior proof. Uh, but I just, again, wanted to show you the two separate ways of using the two different types of theorems in order to prove the same thing. So angle A and B are right angles. That's given. And then directly to the proof statement, angle A is congruent to angle B. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. All right, so let's move on. We're going to use the same process for a different proof. In this case, I have uh, it's given, and G, by the way, stands for given, P for proof. Um, and by the way, in your while you write your statements and reasons, uh, please do not use G for given. Uh, G is just my way of abbreviating because I don't have a lot of space in this slide. So angles A, B, C, and D, E, F are straight angles. Uh, you want to prove that angle uh, A, B, C is congruent to angle D, E, F. Again, we start by uh, identifying what's given. Angle ABC and DEF are straight angles. The measure uh, that's given, measure of angle ABC and DEF is equal to 180 degrees. That's the definition of a straight angle. Uh, therefore, angle A is congruent to angle B because if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. And once again, we can reduce this particular, uh, we can reduce this particular proof by one by just going directly to what's uh, called Theorem 2 in our book. If two angles have uh, our straight angles, then they are congruent. So we avoid having to make them uh, equal to each other in the second step, and then saying if they have the same measure, then they're congruent. All we need to say now is if two angles are straight angles, then they are congruent. Okay, so we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about uh, assuming something from a diagram. In a prior lesson, we talked about uh, 
things you can assume from a diagram. And one of them is that if a line is straight, it's a straight line. Of course, lines are straight, but if you have a line, then it will be a straight angle. Uh, and so we're given that there is a diagram is shown, and I've drawn the diagram and labeled it properly. And I want to prove that angle EFG is congruent to HFJ. So I start, again, I draw my two column proof statements and reasons. Uh, number one, I say diagram is shown, and that's given. Diagram is shown is given. And I say angle EFG and HFJ are straight angles, and we can assume that from the diagram here, right? EFG is a straight angle, HFJ is a straight angle. Those are two lines or straight angles. And then we can say angle EFG is congruent to HFJ, again, because if two angles are straight angles, then they are congruent. And we got that. That was our second theorem that we learned uh, just a couple minutes ago. So assume from diagram you want to use uh, in those cases where we can assume certain things about a diagram, again, which we have gone over in a prior lesson, one of them uh, which is that if an uh, uh, a line, if there is a line, then it creates a straight angle or a segment. Okay, uh, we're going to move on. We're going to skip. This is actually uh, some homework for my students. I believe we have one more uh, uh, proof to look at. And first we have given angle RST here. Our angle RST is going to be 50 degrees. TSV is 40 degrees. And then we say angle X is a right angle. So I've drawn the diagram. It's not pretty. Uh, but I've drawn it. And now we're going to talk about addition and subtraction. This is another concept the book does not formally introduce to my students. So I wanted to direct them uh, to how to use addition and subtraction as part of a proof. So again, I start statements and reasons. I draw my two column proof, statements left, reasons right. One, I state my givens angle RST is equal to 50 degrees. Angle TSV is equal to 40 degrees and X, angle X is a right angle. That's given. Then I'm going to say angle RSV is equal to 90 degrees, and I'm going to use the addition property, or I will accept just addition. And then uh, in parentheses, I want my students to identify what they're adding together and how it equals what uh, it equals in the statements section. So addition, 50 degrees for uh, RST, TSV is 40 degrees, sum is 90 degrees, so uh, angle RSV is equal to 90 degrees. Now at this point, I can go in two directions. One is I can say angle RSV is a right angle by definition, and then go on to say that angle RSV is congruent to angle X, uh, because if uh, two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Or, so I already have that angle X is a right angle. I've proven that angle RSV is a right angle. And these are little nuances and proofs. Now I can say that both angles are congruent because they're right angles. Or I can say in black here that the measure of angle X is equal to 90 degrees by definition of a right angle. And then I can conclude if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent, right? If two angles have the same measure, RSV is 90 degrees, the measure of angle X is 90 degrees, then they are congruent. So two separate ways to solve the same uh, proof. And uh, a lot of times in geometry, that's going to happen. There is more than one way to reach a proof statement. And uh, there's not only one way. And I want to show you that here in this particular proof. All right, so that's basics of... Uh, writing two column proofs. Come and join us next time in the next edition of Otten Math.